Once you're happy with the final result of your project here, it's time to export. And exporting and rendering 360 video and echo rectangular video from Premiere is really easy, especially with all the latest updates that Adobe's added to Premiere. So we'll go ahead and pull up the render window by hitting Command M on the keyboard. So you can scroll through this to kind of see a preview of what your video is going to look like. Um, I like to go through and check for any obvious glaring errors that I may have missed while editing. So once you've scrubbed through, triple checked everything, looks good, um, we can go ahead and check our export settings to make sure they're right. Um, you can export in whichever format you'd like. QuickTime is another you know, common one with like a ProRes or something like that. Um, but for the most part, the most common is H.264. And uh, you can do the match source, start here, um, and then we can come down here and make any other changes if we'd like. But basically you choose where you want to save it here. Obviously you want video in it and audio. Um, and then we can come down here and choose our basic video settings. So it's already at 4K, which is awesome. 23976 is what we, which, which is what we want. Um, most of all this was already set up when we began our project, um, which is how you want it anyway. Um, so all the defaults look great here. Um, we can come down and we can see our bitrate encoding. So for web video, you can usually start somewhere in the neighborhood of eight or 16 is your target and maximum bitrate is 18 megabits um, per second. Uh, but the GoPro, just for the record, does shoot in the neighborhood of 60 megabits per second. So you could come up all the way to 60, maybe you could drop this to like 56 and have your maximum at 60. Um, so that it tries to keep it around 56, but if there's a lot of motion or something, it can bring it back up to 60 like that. So you'll see that our file is pretty large. It's 1.1 gigabytes, um, and the video is only you know almost three minutes long. So it's it's fairly large. But for if you're mastering for online and you want this to be really high quality, um, I would recommend doing something like this. But you can always you know do something like this as well if you want to send a smaller version to you know, colleague or something like that. But uh, I would always leave it a VBR2 pass. Um, and just as a quick summary of what that means, constant bit rate is basically just keeping it at one bit rate the entire time when it's compressing. One pass is obviously just doing that one time, but variably. So you basically set a range uh, bit rate options for the computer to use when it's compressing the video. So it tries to set your target, obviously, but it will come up to the maximum if it needs to, if there's a lot of, uh, you know, movement or uh, motion going on in your shot that it needs more data in order to properly compress. Um, but the two pass option usually gives better results. It looks better and it usually is a little bit smaller because it takes more time. Obviously it goes through twice and analyzes everything two times, which gives you a better result in the end. So I would leave it at two pass for sure. Um, at the bare minimum, I would go 16 on your target and 18 on your maximum, um, but feel free to go up to 56 and 60. Uh, just to kind of match the GoPro's native settings. So I'll leave it at that for now. Um, and then the big one, obviously, is we want to check the video is VR, obviously because it is 360 video, um, not technically virtual reality, but it is, uh, you know, VR for all intents and purposes inside of Premiere. This adds the appropriate metadata for VR video, for uh, echo rectangular video, so that when your client or yourself uploads this uh, echo rectangular video to YouTube or Facebook, it knows, oh, hey, this isn't just a weird looking uh, normal video with an interesting aspect ratio. This is actually 360 video, so they will apply the proper viewer, etc, etc. So make sure that's checked and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, and then, of course, it should default to monoscopic, but uh, that's the one you want to choose for this kind of 360 video. Um, if you want to shoot uh, stereoscopic stuff, that's where this comes in. Um, and in the future, I plan on adding tutorials for shooting 3D uh, 360 video as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, but for this course, it, monoscopic is the choice you want to choose. I like to choose uh, use maximum render quality as well. Um, I've read varying uh, blogs and articles and people's opinions on what exactly this does. Um, I've found that it does make a very subtle difference, so I usually enable it. It does increase the time of your render, uh, which usually isn't a huge deal since you're probably not going to be working uh, you know, on crazy deadline or something up to the last second. Um, but I guess you could disable this if you are in a hurry uh, more than usual. Um, but if you're not, I, you might as well leave that checked because it doesn't add any usually doesn't add too much to your file size um, and it makes your video look that much better. So everything else should be ready. Um, your audio is fine at where it's at, uh, AAC 48 uh, stereo. So uh, go through again, double check everything. Um, looks good here. And uh, you can go ahead and 
um, export it. So you have two options for exporting. You can export through this button here, and that exports straight from Premiere, so Premiere gets held up until the video is done exporting. Or you can queue it, and it adds it to Adobe Media Encoder. So I'll go ahead and show you that now, because export is just, you know, you click and it saves it to your computer. Um, so that's pretty simple. But for the sake of uh, the tutorial, I'll show you some other options, just in case you have a client that, uh, you know, wants multiple versions or multiple whatever's of the finished video. So it will launch Adobe Media Encoder automatically and add your sequence to the queue here. Um, the cool thing about this is you don't need to come back into Premiere and reopen up your render window in order to add another item to your queue. Once you've already added one, you can simply click on this just the, the sequence here. You can either click this button here for duplicate or hit Command D on your keyboard. And it will add another instance of this sequence to be rendered to your queue, your Adobe Media Encoder queue. And then of course you can come in here, click on either custom or H.264 to bring up this window here. And then you can go ahead and choose a different render output. So we'll say, um, we'll go with ProRes and we'll go, I don't know, 422 or something like that. Um, and everything looks good. We definitely don't want it interlaced. That would be bad. So we'll go ahead and just check that to make it uh, match the sequence settings. Um, but yeah, so you can export a ProRes very easily. You can do maximum render quality there and uh, you know, we're good to go. So you can see now that we have an H.264 version and a QuickTime or a ProRes version that we can save to our computer quite easily. And we can duplicate this as many times as we want and make as many different instances as we want. Um, you know, by either, you know, making it smaller, so we can go 1920 by 960 or something, a smaller, maybe a preview version or something like that. And you can save all these. And when you hit play up here, it will actually just render through these one at a time and save them where you want them. So you can, uh, you know, go get lunch or uh, not have to sit and hover over your computer while it renders. So that makes it really easy. Um, just another option uh, that Adobe gives us as far as exporting goes, but it does the exact same thing as uh, basically, you know, opening up your render queue here and hitting export, but it gives you more options to line up a bunch of renders to be rendered out sequentially. So this is exporting. Um, it's very simple. Premiere makes it easy and uh, pretty painless. Um, and this is how you get your hard work out onto your hard drive and ready for sending to your client.